there are three types of discontinuities. And so we're going to be talking about these three different types of discontinuities at the fixed value x is equal to c. Now when I'm looking at these three types of discontinuities, usually I actually check to see if it's, not, if it's the second one first. Is it an infinite discontinuity? Because what I'm looking for for an infinite discontinuity is at least one of the one-sided limits is plus or minus infinity. So we'll write that at least one of the one-sided limits uh, is, is infinite. So I'll just say is plus or minus infinity, okay? It's not required that they match. It's not required that both sides are going to plus or minus infinity. It's saying at least one of the sides is going to plus or minus infinity. Um, notice we're going to get a vertical asymptote there. And so we could, for instance, have this vertical asymptote where maybe there the right-hand side is going off to positive infinity, but it's not required that the left side go off to positive infinity. We could have it at a finite value. It could even be defined f of c could be a finite value, and that doesn't matter. For an infinite discontinuity, we are looking at the two one-sided limits, and if either one of them goes either to plus or minus infinity, that type of discontinuity, regardless of what else is happening, is infinite. So now these other two types of discontinuities um, require that we've got finite for both. And so then it's a matter of comparing what's happening on the two sides. So let's go back here to jump. Um, for a jump discontinuity, we have that the limit as x approaches c from the left is not equal to the limit as x approaches c from the right. But both are finite. Now that's a key, but both are finite. Because see, if they don't match and one of them happens to be infinite, we're not at a jump anymore. We are back at the first thing that we were looking at, infinite discontinuity. So if both of the sides are finite, but they don't go together, that's a jump. We could either be jumping up or jumping down. For instance, um, I like to kind of think about it as jumping up if we're going from the left to the right and have to jump up from one finite takeoff place to a finite landing place. Or likewise, we could be jumping down, but again, jumping from a finite ledge land starting place down to another finite spot. Never are we looking at infinite there. Um, for that particular picture, I happen to just have open circles um, for both the left and the right um, side that we're approaching, but either one of them, not both of them obviously, but either one of them could be filled in and we would still have a jump discontinuity. For jump, we're not looking at all about what the function value is. We're simply looking at the two finite one-sided limits and noticing that they are not the same. For removable here, we actually have that uh, the limit exists. So we'll say the limit as x approaches c of f of x exists. Um, again, it, is, it can't be um, plus or minus infinity. It has to be finite. Um, but notice that when we are saying a limit exists, what we're really saying is that um, the limit from the left matches the limit from the right. That's what it means for a limit to exist. Okay, And so really when we are looking at the types of discontinuities, it's really important that we just split it up into, well, what's the left, left side limit? What's the right side limit? And then we compare. We see if they match, if they don't match, if any of it's infinite, um, and that's how we really determine which of these types we have. So a removable discontinuity in some sense is a very minor discontinuity. We've got a nice uh, little function here and we are just missing um, one point there. And that's why for a removable discontinuity, we often think about a removable discontinuity as being a whole. And so that's where I want to expand here. A removable discontinuity is very minor because if we were to plug in the hole, we would no longer have a discontinuity. And so let's take a look at how we could do that, perhaps algebraically. This example here is an example of a um, rational function. You see it already factored out on the top and the bottom, but what you should notice is there is a common factor there, um, x minus 1, that appears on both the top and the bottom. And so really what we're looking at here 
uh, for f of x is uh, the shape of f of x is going to be identical to the reduced uh, fraction x minus 2 over x plus 3 with the um, understanding that x still can't be equal to 1 because if we were to plug in uh, x equals 1 into the original function, we would have a 0 over 0 situation. It would be um, undefined. Um, what this really is telling us is, um, this piece of information right here, is it's telling us we have a whole at x equals 1. Okay? And so what we need to uh, figure out is how could we plug in that hole? More or less, where is that hole located? Because if I know where that hole is located, then what I can do is plug it in and have a nice um, continuous function. And so here's how we get the y value of the hole. So we said that this, um, this original rational function looks like the reduced rational function except for the single whole. Well, while we cannot plug in x equals 1 into our original function, if we were to um, plug it into the reduced form, we could get a value out. And what that's telling us is not a point on the original function, but rather, um, rather where the whole is for that original function. So if we plug in 1 there, we have a 1 minus a 2 on the top, so that'd be negative 1. We've got a 1 plus 3 on the bottom, which would be 4. And so the y value of that original um, function, or sorry, the, the y value of the whole in the original function there is a negative one fourth. What that's telling us is that the limit as x approaches um, 1, 1 was the location of the whole of the original function f of x, that limit is negative a fourth. Okay, that's the y value of the whole. And so uh, what we could do is we could define um, f of 1 to be that y value of the whole that we would have at 1. And that would make, um, make the original function f continuous at x equals 1. So we would define f of 1 equals to negative 1 fourth uh, to make the original function f of x continuous uh, at x equals 1. And so that would take care of kind of the minor discontinuity, the whole. Now notice that the original function there is a rational function that when we reduced it out, we still had a factor on the bottom. That factor x plus 3 is going to lead to a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3, and that's a much more major type of discontinuity. You can't just plug in it, plug in a hole and make it continuous. And um, that's actually an infinite discontinuity because we have that vertical asymptote.